Big Juke, born Anthony Mims, was a significant figure in the Memphis rap scene, known not just for his own endeavors, but also for his close connection to his brother, the renowned rapper Yo Gotti. Yo Gotti rose to prominence with his gritty lyrics and authentic portrayal of street life, becoming one of the most influential voices in Southern hip hop. His journey from the rough neighborhoods of Memphis to the pinnacle of the rap industry is a tale of talent, perseverance, and the complexities of family ties in the face of fame and adversity. While Yo Gotti's career was marked by commercial success and critical acclaim, it was also intertwined with the darker aspects of the rap world, including feuds and controversies that often spilled over into his personal life. Their bond, forged in the shared experiences of a challenging upbringing, was a reflection of their loyalty and mutual support. The somber occasion that brought Big Jook and Yo Gotti together that fateful day was the funeral of their uncle. Surrounded by grieving family, they paid their final respects, unaware that this day would mark a tragic turn. In the quiet chill of a winter's morning, the world paused in solemn respect for Eric E. Boven, age 63. The wake at Ford & Sons Funeral Home was a somber gathering of sorrow and remembrance. The following day, the final service at Mississippi Christian Church marked not just the end of a life, but unknowingly set the stage for a tragic sequence of events. After the service, the family, including Big Juk, decided to gather for a meal at Perignon Restaurant and Event Center, known for its soulful cuisine, to continue their remembrance in a more personal setting. Yo Gotti had already left Memphis and returned to Atlanta. Big Juk, accompanied only by his lone bodyguard, arrived early at the restaurant, waiting for the rest of the family. They stood outside by their cars, unaware of the impending danger. Suddenly, the quiet afternoon was shattered by the sound of gunfire. Masked gunmen, emerging from a white Ford truck with tinted windows, ambushed them in a calculated attack. Caught off guard, Juke and his bodyguard scrambled towards their car, desperately trying to reach the guns they had left inside. In the chaos, Big Juke was struck multiple times, and even though the bodyguard was hit, he managed to retrieve his weapon. This brazen act of violence, unfolding in broad daylight, left onlookers in a state of shock. Some quick-thinking witnesses seized the opportunity to photograph the getaway vehicle, capturing images of the truck that notably had tinted windows and was missing its license plate, deepening the mystery surrounding the attack. The stark difference in security approaches between the brothers. Yo Gotti's heavy police protection versus Yuke's minimal safeguards became a topic of intense discussion in the community. Yuke's apparent lack of precautions, despite clear threats to his life, was particularly questioned especially considering his active presence on social media throughout the weekend. The incident not only highlighted the dangers associated with their lifestyle, but also raised concerns about the vulnerability of public figures in the face of such targeted violence. The streets whispered of a long-standing feud between Yo Gotti and Young Dolph, which escalated in 2017 when Dolph was ambushed in Charlotte, with gunmen firing over 100 shots to try to kill Young Dolph. But they failed. The near-fatal shooting put the rap world on alert about the violent lengths rivals would go to. In November 2021, four years later, they would try again with the next attack turning deadly when Dolph was shot and killed in Memphis. Those arrested for Dolph's murder had connections to Yo Gotti and Big Juke, fueling rumors that Juke had orchestrated a hit on Dolph. Big Juke's assassination was seen by many as a direct consequence of the ongoing conflict between rival rap crews, possibly a retaliation by Young Dolph's associates. The irony of his death was stark. Mere hours before, Big Juke had been at his uncle's funeral, a setting that should have epitomized safety and sanctuary. Now, the family mourned him as yet another victim in a relentless cycle of revenge stemming from young Dolph's affiliates. The timing and circumstances of Big Juke's murder strongly suggest that it was a direct retaliation killing by young Dolph's associates, seeking revenge for Dolph's death over two years later. This tragic event is seen as a grim consequence of the escalating dispute between the two rap crews, a conflict that has grown increasingly violent over time. Big Juke became collateral damage in a war where the lines between music, personal vendettas, and street justice are tragically blurred. The community's reaction to these events was a mix of grief, frustration, and a deep-seated desire for change. The ongoing dispute, which had now claimed multiple lives, was a stark reminder of the urgent need to address the underlying issues fueling such conflicts. The hope was that the tragic loss of Big Juke following the death of Young Dolph would serve as a catalyst for a broader conversation about violence, retribution, and the need for a new path forward in the Memphis rap scene and its associated communities. 
While the investigation into the assassination continues, the police face the challenge of piecing together the events leading up to the shooting. The community speculated about possible motives and suspects, but the truth remains shrouded in mystery and street code silence. In the wake of this tragedy, the Memphis community called for an end to the cycle of violence. The hope was that Duke's death would spark conversations about violence and the need for peace and reconciliation. However, many observers recognized that this might remain just a dream. In the aftermath of Big Duke's death, an Instagram video he had recorded started going viral, adding another layer of anger to the already tense situation. In the video, Big Juke was seen mocking young Dolph, who was prominently featured in the center of a mural alongside two other figures by using a derogatory term, further inflaming the already volatile feud between the rival factions. The perceived pain and loss felt by young Dolph's crew was still raw, and their desire for retribution against Yo Gotti and CMG was widely known across the country. This echo of revenge continued to resonate Lundis through the streets of Memphis. It was a reminder of the deep-seated grudges held by many who loved young Dolph, determined to leave a trail of sorrow and destruction in their wake. The community stands at a crossroads, caught between the desire for peace and the harsh realities of street justice. No suspects have been apprehended and police have not linked it to Young Dolph's death investigation at this point. For Yo Gotti, this period marks a profound personal and professional crisis. The loss of his brother in such a violent manner is not just a blow to his family, but also a challenge to his influence in the rap community. It's a stark reminder of the costs associated with the path he took to obtain his current lifestyle. In his final Instagram post, Big Juke conveyed a message that now resonates with eerie prescience. They don't want to face you, they want to snake you. Stay alert to stay alive, watch your back at all times. Put snakes on the plate and eat great. This post, laden with symbolism and a foreboding sense of conflict, has become a haunting epitaph for a life cut tragically short. Big Juke's passing has ignited a firestorm of retribution, with Young Dolph's crew seemingly determined to ensure that Yogati pays the ultimate price. This unyielding pursuit of vengeance marks a seemingly dangerous time for Yogati as he now becomes the central figure in a dangerous game of revenge that is far from over. Thank you for tuning in to Hood History Club. If you found today's content insightful and engaging, please show your support by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. As a new YouTube channel, every like, subscribe, and share helps us grow and continue to bring you more compelling stories and deep dives into the complex narratives that shape our communities. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss out on our latest videos. Thank you for being a part of the Hood History Club, where history is not just told but felt and understood. See you in the next video.